Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. For today's video, we are doing a road to championship rebuild for the Brooklyn Nets. So yes, guys, the Brooklyn Nets definitely one of the most surprising teams this NBA season. Just been a ton of fun to watch. Uh, I just love the talent on this entire roster looking up and down it so we are going to be starting the 2019 nba offseason uh the reason is because i don't want to like have any credit for anything they're doing in this current season as far as a rebuild goes so yes man as always the goals of these is to keep on rebuilding this team until we win an nba championship let me know in the comment section below which team i should do next as always if you do me that crispy favor man and please drop a like on this video so as far as this roster go has or like you know go is going into this offseason we have D'Angelo Russell, whose contract is expired. Um, the way he's been playing as of late, guys, he's been absolutely amazing. Keep in mind, this is not the legit stats because start today mode in 2K is still broken. But yeah, for the most part, he's been like a 20-plus score. You know, uh, really good playmaker this season, too. Just been an absolute beast, man. Like, he really should be in the running for one of the most improved players in the entire NBA. Um, but you have Karis LeVert, who I absolutely love. I, was, I felt so bad when he went down with uh, an injury early in the season. But he's bounced back, been a nice player. You got Spencer Dinwiddie, and any time I've ever, did, ever done Nets rebuild, I've always elected to put D'Lo at the shooting guard spot and put Dinwiddie at the starting point guard spot. Um, now I've kind of realized that Dinwiddie off the bench just really helps this team even more because you don't really need Dinwiddie and D'Lo in the game at the same exact time. I mean, yes, they can play together, but just having a guy with such a good contract, only about uh, you know about eleven million dollars a season, to come off your bench and just be, uh, be like that consistent guy out there is big time. We have Jared Allen, one of my favorite centers in the entire NBA. Let me just say real quicker, man, like that 53-point shot. The guy can make three-point shots, 2K, but you all know that 2K doesn't always update their players. Uh, but as far as that goes, too, man, you know, he's really good at rebounding the basketball, 89 defensive rebound, and his shot block is at an 84. He's definitely blocked some superstars this season from the likes of Giannis, I believe LeBron, and also Blake Griffin. Uh, we got Joe Harris, who is a three-point sniper. I believe he was the winner of the three-point competition. We got Ed Davis, uh, one of the best rebounding guys in the entire league, uh, especially off the bench. Like, he still puts up big-time rebounding numbers. You got Damari Carroll, Shabazz Napier. Uh, we got Rondi Hollis, who actually just hit a game-winning layup. So good for him on that, man. And a lot of other really good talent out here. So the first thing we are going to do is hit up the uh, staff signing and see, like, because the coach situation, we got Kenny Atkinson out there, B-minus, C-minus, B-minus. Um, I wish his potential was a little bit better, but I'm actually okay with him as head coach right now because this team's definitely heading in the right direction. So, I guess next up, we go to the NBA draft. I don't know the specific draft situation of the uh, Brooklyn Nets here, but uh, I, I assume it's probably a decent pick. Now that they have, Okay, they actually got back-to-back. -back. They got the 23rd and the 24th pick here in the draft. So, let's see who's available first. And if not, I'm going to see if I can potentially package those together and see if we can do something with that. So, as far as the best players available, you got have... Uh, Brandon Clark, who is a power forward. Daniel Gafford, who's just declared in the real life for the NBA. Jonte Porter, we got Cam Giants at the small forward spot. So, yeah, those are the best, like, overall rating guys. And you look at the, let's go look at the 2K ranking. And I guess we'll go to the uh, DAE ranking right here. You got Tyler Harrow, Luka Samnich right there. You got Jonte Porter. So, some pretty solid players. I like to go with Luka just because, like, you know, by the time he's ready to come to the team, he's going to be a bit of a better player. Because I don't need him absolutely right now. But I feel like down the road... Uh, he would be a nice guy to put alongside Jared Allen just because of his three-point stretching abilities out there. I mean, 21 points, five rebounds, three assists. So I think I'm going to go with him, guys, for my first pick and just kind of stash him away. So let's go to our, I guess, did we just have the one pick? Okay, no, now, now we get our 25th pick right there. It didn't let me, like, simulate to that right away. Looks like that Zach Harper guy was smoking a bong or something. Bro, you see that picture on the lower left corner? Okay, let's go to the trade finder for this one. So the 24th pick, uh, I'm even going to elect to toss in... Probably my second round pick and see if we can just get like a decent veteran player to help this team next season. So we got Jonah Boner, maybe a good prospect to work on too. We got Charles Basie right there. Don't really need another center. We have a 2020 first draft pick. We got Robert Williams. Would definitely be a nice backup center. Chris Wilkes, Alex Len, Kelly Olin would be a nice stretch big to have on the team. Um, I actually kind of like the idea of him alongside uh, Jared Allen for the season. Just because the power forward position right now they have like uh, that... The Lions guy playing. They also have Rondé Hollis Jefferson. So this would give us something pretty nice here for the future. I'm going to go with Kelly Olney, guys. Just seems like a nice addition to the team. Or if anything, it comes off the bench, and that's okay too. Because um, outside of D'Lo getting his money, like I hope to sign some sort of big name free agent to come to this team. So we got Luka, 68 overall. Hopefully his rating does go up. I'm sure it will eventually. And we got Karis back on the team option. Jared Allen, of course, for the two-year team option. Uh, Shabazz. 
Uh, I mean, that's just way too good of an offer to pass up. Like, I know we already do have what's his name on team with Spencer Dinwiddie, but uh, I guess Shabazz can probably play some time at shooting guard too. So I'm gonna bring him on the team just for that reason. Of course, Alan Krabby Patty is uh, gonna you know be taking his 19 million dollars. Maybe I can package him away with Shabazz to entice the team to take, uh, you know, like take on that contract too. So qualifying offers, uh, Alan Williams, 77 overall. I just don't really have a need for him here on the team. Uh, Theo, don't really need him either. Uh, Rondé Hollis, I mean, that's a pretty good offer. Then D'Lo, I'm just going to throw him his money out there just because I feel like he deserves it. I don't want to, like, piss him off by not, by not, uh, not uh, paying the guy out there. So, yeah, let's go over here to D'Lo. And he's only a one-star system match for this team, but it is what it is. So, I'm going to go about 135, I'd say. That seems about right to me. And, okay, so he agrees to that offer. That's very nice. Do it the rounds rights on Demari Carroll. I am definitely okay with that. Okay, so we got him. Uh, I do also want to get Ed Davis back if he is not too damn expensive, which he very well could be. Uh, Six million dollars. Like I said, we don't have right time anymore, though, so I'm actually going to bypass through this real quick here and get to the actual free agency. So let's see if he's still available. But I went to a different team. No, six million dollars. Um, I'll sign up for that offer some night overall players. So that's not bad. If he decides to come on the team, Williams going to a different team. I'm okay with that. Uh, so we got Ed Davis. And then Rondé, I think I'm just going to hold off to see if Rondé accepts the, uh, it would be nice to have him off the bench, but not for no $16 million, not really looking to do all that, so, yeah, let's go over here now to the, uh, trade finder real quick, and see if we can free up a little money here, man, so I'm thinking we do a trade of Shabazz and Alan Crab. although Crab for one season for $18 million, like, I, I do need a backup shooting guard, so, it's really not a bad route to go with, I mean, he's got an 86 three-point shot, so you know what, man? I think I'm going to hang on to him for this season. Um, there's not really any like other positions I want to like improve big time at. Uh, I don't really have like the money right now to like sign all uh, some of these other guys, so I'm not really going to bother with that this time around. I think I'm going to hold off and see like you know like what my situation is after this season. But yeah, as far as any of these other guys we could sign, I mean we're good at the point guard spot, shooting guard spot. I feel like we're pretty good at. Um, if Shabazz ends up playing that, we got Alan Crabb of course too. Small forward position, we got some young bloods out there. Power forward spot. I mean, we got Ed Davis out there, and Kelly Olnick will probably start at that spot, and we'll use a few other guys, you know, to play the four or three spot at the time, so we're good, guys. We're good at this first season. I kind of want to, like, trust the process, for lack of a better term, and see what we can do with this Nets team, man. I don't want to get, like, too crazy in free agency. I feel like we have the players. I want to be able to pay them down the road. Okay, so here is the team going into the season. We got D'Lo at point guard, Karis LeVert at shooting guard, Joe Harris at small forward, uh, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson at power forward, Jared Allen at center. You might be wondering, Chris, but this, like, like, this is their exact lineup. That's because it is, man, and it's just a good look to it right now. Um, I decided to use Olenek off the bench just because, like, we have a lot of scoring in the first unit anyway, so having Rondé out there just for defensive purposes could actually be pretty nice for us. Uh, we got Dinwiddie against uh, 27 minutes a game as the sixth man with Kelly Olenek at the uh, four slash five spot. Uh, Rodians at the small four position getting 13 minutes, and then we got Ed Davis. Actually, we'll knock this down a little bit here. We'll do that, split them right there. Unfortunately, like Shabazz, I, I know I signed him back on this team. I just don't really have room to play him. And then Alan Crabb, it's just not going to be happening either. So those guys are there just in case some of these other guys follow out or things like that. But I mean, Dinwiddie can play both guard spots. And, you know, we got Karras and Joe Harris can both play multiple positions. So if we stagnate the, uh, you know, the lineups, it should be good to go. But yeah, man, I don't got much more to say. Like, this team is ready to ball out. I'm, think, I'm thinking it's probably a 50-win team in the Eastern Conference this time around. So let's go ahead and simulate this NBA season and see if we can get to the NBA playoffs and be one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference. Okay, so a record of 46 and 35. I think we're definitely going to have to find a different coach uh, heading into the NBA offseason, assuming we don't win the championship here for whatever reason. But I went to the uh, system proficiency, and originally I had it on defense because that was his specialty. It was only a two-star system. So I did switch it to balance, which is three and a half stars, but it's not the coach's like specialty out there. So it's just not really going to have this team playing uh, their best basketball if the coach doesn't preach the system. So yeah, we're definitely not a defensive team. I mean, yeah, we have nice defensive players. I would hope all NBA teams have some sort of nice, you know, defensive players out there. But I mean, it's just not really our specialty. You know what I'm saying, man? So here is the all NBA teams as D'Lo did make the all NBA third team. So he was definitely worth the money we paid him. And it wasn't even like a max contract. It was near max, but not quite a max, which sounds probably about right. But he definitely will probably get a max contract. So we are the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference. I mean, I was hoping for a little bit better of a, of a, a better jump than that. But our player stats down the season, D'Lo 27 points, 9 assists. 
three rebounds, no complaints about him. We got Karis LeVert at 16.6 assists, really becoming like that second star for this team. Although I'm kind of debating putting him at the small forward position and putting Joe Harris at shooting guard. I feel like that might make a little bit more sense. This is just how it is as of right now. Uh, did win a 13.6 assists off the bench. Jared Allen, double-double on the season with the two blocks. So that's nice to see. And then uh, Rodney House Jefferson, actually pretty damn nice numbers. Still not paying him $16 million a season. But uh, Olenek not far behind with 10 points and 4 rebounds himself anyway. So... We also have uh, this dude now with 74 overall, so he's probably not going to be quite ready yet um, to play for his next season. But here we go. We got the first round against the Washington Wizards, who got themselves up to a third seed. So John Wall must be feeling good now or something like that. Man, I really don't know. But uh, we up three games to one, and we win four games to one as we get to now play the Milwaukee Bucks in the second round. That's never a great time, but uh, hey, it is what it is. And look at this. We got 34 for D'Lo, 27 for Dinwiddie, and 26 for Joe Harris. So that's our big splash through right there, bro. Uh, next up, Milwaukee simulate current round here. Not expecting to get past them, but I've seen crazier things happen. Uh, we got tied series at two games apiece, down 3-2, tied series, and we lose in a game seven, man. But hey, the fact man, that we took the Milwaukee Bucks to a game seven, that's some sort of positivity to have going into this offseason. So it's okay, man. Like, just... My goal for this season is probably to find a coach that fits a better fit for our style of play. And uh, we should have a little bit of money freed up now that uh, Alan Krabby is going to be... Or Alan Krabby, I should say. I keep calling him Krabby, Patty Dan, man. Uh, now that he should be off the books. So, first, let's go to the staff signing and see who is available, actually. Uh, we got Mike D'Antoni. We got Underwood. We got Trent P uh, Pedersen here. Uh, we have Barney Rowe, who's an A-minus offense, C-plus defense, and a B-minus potential. So, I love the A-minus already he's got a balanced system which is good enough for me man so i think i'm gonna try uh barney the bitch ass dinosaur here and uh, sign him up to a four-year deal we'll give him a chance at this team i mean he's gotten to coach anthony davis of course you know the pelicans aren't very good but it's not barney's fault or maybe it is all right nba draft time hit this up next and uh, it's not gonna be a fantastic draft pick but it is actually i guess it's a 19th pick so no complaints about that um so we got lewis king available who is a 76 overall so yeah, we also got Precious out there. We got Vernon Carey Jr., Jalen Horde. We got LaMelo Ball, who is an offensive-minded point guard. I just have no use for LaMelo Ball. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry to say here, guys. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Lewis King here. So it looks like he's a good all-around player, good defensively. Might be somebody to, uh, you know, probably be our backup small forward, I would say, unless there's somebody I'm not thinking of, which there probably is. 44% from three. Uh, yeah, those are some really good-looking stats. 85 three-point shot. Wow, man, he also had a nice mid-range shot, too. So... This is definitely a nice pickup. We have ceiling Monte Williams in the floor being Devin George. Should be able to hit jumpers from 15 feet regularly. Is good at attacking the basket. That's great, man. Welcome to Team Lewis King, the king of Brooklyn. I mean, that's not your official title. You got to actually, you know, earn that title first. But we'll see what happens. So he's a 75 overall. We also get... I'm not even going to try that name there, man. I'm going to try it. Mother Fine Do. <laughs> and we also got Luca, so we'll bring him down the squad now. Also... Uh, team player options. We got Jarrett back. We got Kelly Olenek uh, back on a player option. And Musa here, who is a 76 overall. I'm going to save him maybe for some trade bait. Because I don't really see him playing over Lewis King at all. So, we're going to, you know, we're still going to bring him back, though. Qualifying offers. Karis LeVert. Another guy who i would probably just going to pay him his money here. Just because I feel like he deserves a man. I don't want to piss nobody off. Uh, and this, I, well, there's actually some really nice players available here. But, uh... Wow, dude, there's some really good players. So who could we actually use in our team right now uh, from a positional standpoint? So point guard, we're good. Shooting guard, this is when we get Harris back, we're good. Uh, we need to get, we also need to get uh, Joe Harris back. Need to get, we need to get Karis LeVert back. The power forward spot, we got Olenek there, but he could definitely still be a bench player for us. So, okay, do we have, do we have rights on some of these guys? So let's check that first. So yes, we got rights on Karis Joe and Rondé Hollis Jefferson. So we're going to hold off on them for right now. Um, and try to get somebody else first. I guess we'll try doing that first here. So yeah, I'm thinking probably the four spot. Let's, uh, we got Miritich, who would be a nice stretch to have alongside Jared Allen. That's really the only position I need all that much. Small forward, I mean, you know, I, I guess we could probably use Joe Harris off the bench. But I, I just don't really need like a Jamal Murray or anybody like that. So I'm not going to go for anybody like, uh, for those guys. I'd rather have Karis LeVert right now over Buddy Heal just for this specific team. So, yeah, give me Miritich first. At least I'm going to try try to get him on the team. So, 
If I do this, then I gotta renounce rights. Yeah, I'm not all about that, man. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not trying to renounce rights. Okay. I thought I had a better situation than that. Turns out I don't. Although, this might work. Okay. Okay, so I can cap hold you. And I can cap hold Joe Harris if I do this. Um, I just have to let go of guys like Randy Hollis, which is okay, man. I'd rather have Miritich right now. So, we got Miritich. So, next up, we gotta get Joe Harris back. And where's he at? Where's he at? Yo, where you at, Joe? Where you at, Joe? Yo, hey, actually, you know, it still might not work out here, man. We still might not have, have money, enough money to do all this. Uh, so, Joe Harris, give him that money. And then, Karis Levert. Because these guys are definitely the top priority. So, we'll give him that right there. Karis is accepting it off from the Grizzlies. Uh, so, I can still match that. And I think so far, so good. And now I don't have enough for Miritich, man. I don't understand this. It's like I can, like... Because with bird rights, you're over. You're able to go over the hard cap, which I did. You're supposed to sign those guys first. I don't know, man. Maybe it's because I had to give uh, more money over to uh, what's his name. But it's fine. I'm not really, like, upset about it. A little upset, maybe. Yeah, I definitely don't have nearly enough money to get Miritich on this team now. But uh, this should be okay for us. Just, like, now I can't get Randy Hollis back. But uh, probably was not going to pay him all that money anyway. It was $60 million, dude. So... I'm thinking we can get uh, Rodians here, who is 6'9", put him at the fourth spot. And we got Joe Harris still, probably put Olenek as the starting four of this team. So, we still got Lewis King out there, uh, Luka out there too, not looking bad. Um, let's make sure we got all of our players back that we actually want to have back though. So yeah, we have no bird rights out there that we got to worry about. And yeah, overall wise, don't really have much more else going on. I guess like... Uh, Belitza here. That's why I always call him. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, man. But for $3 million, that's actually a really nice contract. So, I'm going to give him a little bit more. So, we got him on the squad, actually. Which, you know, he's like... There's Rondé Hollis, who on one side of the spectrum is the defensive guy. Then you got Belitza here, who is on the other side, who is all offense. So, that should be fine. All right, man. We're good to go. Uh, let's go ahead and simulate to the beginning of the regular season. Okay. So, here is the team for this season. We got D'Lo. Joe Harris now playing shooting guard. Karras at the three spot. Old Nick starting at the four. And Jared Allen at the five. Uh, ben Shinu, we got Dinwiddie with Rodians here at that small forward spot. Musa is actually going to start as shooting guard with Ed Davis at center and Belitza here at the power forward position. And what I'm going to do, because Lewis King, like, I like him, man. I put him at the shooting guard spot to be a 6'9 shooting guard down the road, although could very well still be a small forward. I'm thinking him and Luka, we're both going to put both those guys into the, uh, into the G League just because, like, I don't need him right now anyway, so that should be fine. So let's go ahead and do that. And just get them prepared for next season. So the Long Island Nets. And uh, yo, I got to go and sign a free agent real quick here. Just so I can have another roster spot. So just uh, give me somebody cheap here, man. Give me uh, give me Cody Martin. Cody Martin, your time has come. And I actually cannot even afford you. We'll give you that minimum. Should be good to go. All right. So now I can go over here. And I can put our other dude into the G League. Where you at uh, Luca? There you go, man. Luca Skywalker. Perfect. And we also got uh, DJ Augustine and J.R. Smith just for, like, some backup role player roles out there. So, yeah, man, 10-man rotation. No complaints here, really, with the rotation. Uh, I probably want to get, I guess, probably get uh, Joe and uh, Karis LeVert here in a few more minutes. We'll get you at about 33. We'll get Joe at about 31. And we'll go, we'll do this right there. That looks good to me, man. Okay, so team is good to go. Uh, for the system proficiency, we are going to stick it out with the balance system with our new coach, Barney the Bitch-Ass Dinosaur. Let's go ahead, guys. Simulate this NBA season and see if this is the year we can win it all. Okay, so uh, 53 wins this time around. One more game against the Pacers. I'm very curious how these playoffs are going to go because if we can't get it done, man, then it might be time to start looking at a big-time trade to bring another superstar to play alongside... You know, maybe uh, you know, D'Lo and also Jarrett Allen. I'm not going to trade either one of those guys. At least I don't plan on it. But then again, you never know which deals might come up there, man. So D'Lo making the All-NBA third team. All right. And we are the uh, second seed in the Eastern Conference. So we can definitely do some things with that. Uh, player says, or we can just choke and, you know, lose in the first round. But D'Lo, 25 points, 8 assists. Karras at 17, 4 and 6. Uh, we got Jarrett at 15 with 14 rebounds and 3 blocks per game with 1 steal. How is he not Defensive Player of the Year? Didn't what he's still looking good. Kelly Olnick at 13 a game, 12 for Joe Harris, uh, who shot a nice 44% from three. Although, with some of these other young guys out there, man, like, I can see myself potentially training Joe Harris away uh, just to make room for some of the young bloods out there and, you know, getting some sort of value back for him. But we'll see how that all goes. Uh, first round, we do have the Detroit Pistons. So, simulate this right here. See how it goes. And got game one. We got game two. Up 3-0. And we swept them four games to zero. We are going to have the Boston Celtics in the second round. Here is our closeout game. 24 for D'Lo and 24 for Karis LeVert. All right. 
simulate current round against the Celtics, who's always a tough team to beat in this game. But uh, we're up 2-0 against them, down 2-1 now, tied 2-2, and 3-2 lead, and tied series, and we lose in a game 7 here, man. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's not looking any better here, man. We just cannot get out of that second round of the playoffs, I believe, so far. This is my longest running uh, episode so far for the Road to Championship series. So, I don't know, man. We're going to do something. Like, I don't believe we have much money in free agencies. So, we might have to do some sign trades. I don't really know at this point. Uh, let's go straight to probably just the rookie signings. I'm not too concerned about the NBA draft. It's not going to be a very good draft pick after winning 54 games. Uh, yeah, I'm not even going to bother with that guy right there. I really don't care to. Team player options. Uh, we have... Dinwiddie declined his uh, Rodians, except well, we actually we got a team option on both these guys. So, yeah, we are going to have to pay uh, the man some money. Also, Jared Allen's contract is, you know, I mean, he's qualifying offers. So, once again, man, I do want to pay the guy his cash out there to get him on the squad. Uh, but here we go. So, let's go ahead. Dinwiddie, I'm going to pay him his money here, man. He deserves it, I think. And he's been a great player on this team. Also, where we at with, uh, yo, where's he at, man? Yo, where's our, where, where's our guy at? He better have some rights on him, dude. Jared Allen, he does have rights, thankfully. So we'll give him that, and we get both of our players back. Uh, Kelly Olenek, what's his contract situation? We do have rights on him. He's still been a nice player, so I'm going to pay him his cash out there, too. Can't promise he'll be the starter on the season, but we have a lot of money tied up in our roster right now. But, uh, you know, you work so hard on developing these guys that you just simply want them to, you know, you want them to be part of your roster for the long term. So... Here we go, man. Uh, I'm pretty much done with this. I'm going to go ahead and simulate to the beginning of the regular season and see if I can find some decent trades. Okay, so I did look at some different trades out there. There was really nothing, like, worth even going after. I mean, I love our roster here, guys. Like, it's a whole bunch of young players. We got some veterans out there. So, for the start lineup, we're going to go with D'Lo at point guard. Lewis King is going to start at shooting guard with Karis LeVert at small forward. Uh, Luka is going to get the start at the fourth spot with Jared Allen at the five, now 8-9 overall. Uh, Dinwiddie at point guard, Olnick at power forward slash the center spot with Joe Harris getting some minutes at shooting guard. And Rodian's out there at small forward. There's the rest of the unit. So, yeah, looking pretty dang good, man. Um, here we go. We are going to go ahead and simulate this next season and see if this is the year, man, that we can win the NBA championship. Okay, so a record of 40 and 33, a bit of a downfall, but it was to be expected because we did insert two new players into the starting lineup, two younger players also. So, I mean, I thought just adding those, like, younger athletic dudes in with our already talented roster would kind of help things out, but uh, who knows, man. I mean, it's playoff time, so that's what it's all about. All-NBA first team, All-NBA second, All-NBA third. So, no uh, D-Lo this time around as far as I'm seeing, but uh, we got Luka at the all-rookie first team, so that's pretty cool to see. And uh, Lewis came in the all-rookie second team. So we are still the first seed in the Eastern Conference. So I'm definitely happy about that. Uh, player stats on the season. We got D'Lo, 22 points, 8 assists. Uh, we got Jared at 16 with 15 rebounds, 3 blocks. Lewis King, wow, these guys actually played amazing, man. Like, they played really well for us out there. Karras at 14 points. Oh, damn, dude. I'm a lot more excited about this team going to the playoffs now. Like, our young bloods, they were insane, guys. Like, look at that. All right. First round, Chicago Bulls, simulate current rounds, and hopefully we can just win this man and be done with it and win that championship for the uh, Brooklyn Nets as we sweep the Chicago Bulls four games to zero. That's uh, definitely a solid start. And close out game, 28 points, 15 rebounds for Jarrett, 12 and, I'm sorry, 21 and 12 for uh, D'Lo, 18 points, 8 assists for Lewis King. I know he had passing abilities like that too. All right, Indiana next, simulate current round here. And got game one, got game two. Damn, dude, we, we, we freaking killed it out here, man. Swept them four games to zero. Um, unfortunately, we do have the first and second seed in the Western Conference, and we got to get through the second seed, Atlanta Hawks, uh, you know, to even get to the finals in the first place. So, simulate current round here, man. And we got game one, got game two, got game three. Oh, man, we lost the game. We lost the game. No, no, no. Okay, four games to one. I'm feeling good about this. And we have the San Antonio Spurs, the team I definitely uh, prefer to play here. Damn, dude, Lewis King. Okay, you are officially the king of Brooklyn. 29 points on 13 for 16 shooting. Really making his uh, name for himself out there. Also, Luka at 20 points. 14 assists for D'Lo. All right. Uh, San Antonio, their team looking like this. They Oh, they got Zion? Why you all get Zion, man? And Michael Porter Jr. Oh, my God. Ugh, that's not good for us. 56 wins on the season, man. Lost game one, lost game two. Oh, my God. We're going to lose. Ah! <laughs> no. Zion Williamson. It's because earlier in my uh, NBA News Alert video, I said he was fat. I did not personally say it. Just others were saying it. 
Okay, guys, uh, to keep this a bit shorter, I am just going to go ahead. I don't have much changes to make here. I'm going to go ahead and simulate to the end of next season. Okay, so here we are at the end of the season, a record of 58 and 23. So this one went uh, definitely a bit better this time around. Finish the now on the season, of course, so because I said that. So MVP, come on, D-Lo. Stephen Curry winning it yet again. Terrence Clark, Rookie of the Year. Here's the rest of the awards. Barney Rowe getting Coach of the Year, so that means we're probably the first seed um, in the Eastern Conference. So, yeah, just so you guys team real quick here, man. Uh, just because, like I said, I didn't really make any changes at all. Just did the rotations and things like that. So, first seed, Eastern Conference, player stats. We got uh, D'Lo, 21 points, 9 assists. Lewis King, 18 points, now 87 overall. Jared Allen continues to put up defensively beastly numbers. We got Karis LeVert, Luka out there still. Spencer at 89 overall. Joe Harris at 83. Olnick, 83. Uh, Rodians at 83. And Musa is at 82. And the rest of the players out there that are just kind of, you know, as, uh, assigned to the team towards the end of the offseason. So, first round, Atlanta Hawks. This time, man, um, I don't know. Oh, my God. Do not lose. Come on, guys. What are you doing, man? Down 2-1. 2-2. Two, two. We good. We good. Okay, 3-2. I'm feeling better. Okay, four games to two. You guys made me nervous with that one, man. Like, we have the first seed. We have Coach of the Year out there. All right, next up, Detroit Pistons. And got game one this time. 2-0. Feeling good. 3-0. And, oh, 3-1. Come on, man. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Okay, four games to one. We have Philadelphia in the Eastern Conference Finals. All right. Similar current round here. Come on, guys. And got game one. Okay, we got, okay, one tied series. Okay, 2-1. Come on, man. Three, get, get the 3-2. Get the 3-2. Feeling good. And four games to two. Utah Jazz, the second seed uh, here in the NBA Finals. They also have LaMelo Ball oh, on the uh, 76ers. Interesting fit. Very interesting fit indeed. But, uh... Here we go, man. Jazz team looking like this. Damn, that's a good-looking squad. All right. Simulate current round and lost game one, lost game two. Okay, 2-1, two, 2-2, two, two, two. We are the NBA champions. Four games to two. Spencer Dinwiddie appropriately getting the finals MVP. Hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Uh, definitely was focusing more on just developing the guys we already have here. Although, realistically speaking, I do think the Nets are going to be a heavily sought-out destination for big-name free agents. We'll see how that goes in the real offseason. But yeah, man, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to drop that like. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. And peace out.